Guys, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this must have been, uh, what, what was the reaction when you, you found out that this was all kind of happening that with, with BAFTA and Breakthrough Brits? I mean, it must have been quite a, quite a day when you found out that you'd been up for this. Yeah, shocking <laughs> and happy. Yeah. Like, great. Like, I rang yeah. my mom straight away and then didn't read the NDA at the bottom of the email that said, don't tell anyone. <laughs> so I rang her back and was like, mom, don't tell anyone. But yeah. That was lovely. Yeah, it was. Really it was, exciting. Was, yeah. Is it something that you have to be you have to be put forward for, or is it something that you you're you're nominated for? Is, is someone put you forward for it, or is it no, you, just comes from? I mean, like you you apply f for part of it, and then um, you then get um, but you can get recommended mm -hmm. um, for it, uh, and then you then have to get like two referees yeah. to to support you and be like, yeah, he is really good, she's really good. So, and that's kind of the way that the process works, I think. And yeah. then it goes through the whole jury uh, process as well that you have no idea about. Exactly. It's all yeah. secretive, not even like the jury members, I don't think. Yeah. No, who else is on? Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. It's all a mystery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, was I, told I don't even can't talk about it. You know, yeah. Don't, it don't even out. know how I'm here, to be <laughs> yeah. honest. Uh, we, <laughs> we were both in Cape Town, we were both applying. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then yeah. I was talking to you like a couple of weeks ago whenever we found out and I was like, hey, any news? And I was like, I don't know any news with you. I don't know any news. That, so we're both trying to like, like figure it out if we heard yeah, anything. Super <laughs> secretive about it. Yeah. But um, it is such a mysterious process. Mm. It sounds it. Yeah. I'm intrigued. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but obviously, I mean, BAFTA is such a the kind of foundation of the, the British film and, and TV industry. Mm. That in itself must be a great feeling to know that they that you're on a radar somewhere that they've picked you up and gone, oh, these guys. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's so... Um, validating to to the work that we do and it's just nice to know that we've that we got their support um and that they do they sort of enjoy building relationships and supporting that really yeah um yeah it's uh, yeah and BAFTA are incredible they like with all the kind of master classes and stuff that they do as well which um again they're able to bring in so many big names and people in the room to happily share their knowledge. It's, 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 it's incredible. At the start of your careers, what was it that kind of drew you both to, to acting? Because you're still relatively young in terms of your career and everything else. Uh, what was it that drew you when you were kids or when you were at school or anything that kind of drew you to, to this, this world of show, as they say? Watching films. Yeah. It's like because I grew up in the middle of nowhere, like in a woods, but there was no internet so what you watched was like on film four or on the telly and the movies that was on on like a friday or saturday night so for me that was like my kind of education into into filmmaking and um or that like i had to like actively go to like the dvd store in order to find blockbuster, blockbuster. Yeah. but then at that all the blockbusters are sold out so you'd find yourself down some aisle with like all these unknown films that suddenly you're like, oh wait, who's this guy? Like Shane Meadows, I've never seen him before. And, okay. Yeah. Know just where chopping you're going that line. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm an even bit. Well, no, well, mine, again, mine is, I was through video games. So playing games as a kid, I didn't really um, connect well with uh, TV or film simply because I just, I, there wasn't anyone who really looked like me when I was watching this stuff. And, uh, Theatre wasn't necessarily something that was easily accessible to me. I think I didn't even know what theatre was when I was growing up. But um, through video games and through the storytelling of that, that sort of attracted me to the idea of telling stories um, and going on these journeys with these characters. Um, yeah, that was that was my way in, really. And probably like the odd animated film. I just remember reenacting Beauty and the Beast <laughs> just then. Just It just hit me just then of doing it to my mum and dad and then pretending that they enjoyed it. You would it. be an amazing bum. Thank you. Thank you. I was actually thinking you'd be an amazing beast. So I, I guess that's the remake. <laughs> Hope you're watching Disney. Uh, I love how you say your mum and dad were pretending to like it. Yeah, I mean, like, genuinely were like, I don't know, I think they were like, I think there is something wrong with our child. <laughs> you and me just reenacting the, the scene. And I remember the scene of me turning from beast to prince. Oh, God, that's really awkward. You recreated That's a moment. It. Yeah, I recreated it in our living room. Wow. With a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> was there a particular video game that 
was there a particular one? Was it like Red Dead Redemption or Grand Theft Auto? Or was, oh, it, was it something? Because there's, there's so many, and there's so those games, whether they are for you know, over 18s yeah. or younger, the, the storytelling in them is, is really Ocarina rich. Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of, of course, Time for yeah. me was on the 64. That was, um, that was something where I generally felt like, oh, this is a really interesting journey, and this is a really you know, cool story to, to be, to, to witness, you know, um, even Pokemon, man, on like Pokemon Red on the Game Boy, you know, you're playing this kid who's wants to be the very best that no one ever was. No, I'm not going to start singing. Uh, mm -hmm. but the thing is, it's like, <laughs> but, uh, but no, but it was, you know, just that journey as well of going through this, again, all these different obstacles you faced. It was just, it was just, I, it just connected to me. Um, like, you know, the first sort of piece that, uh, game that I cried to was like Kingdom Hearts as a kid. And oh, I remember yeah. like playing that and being like, this is so beautiful. And just for it to move me in that way, it's like, again, just the power of storytelling, right? So, yeah. yeah. How have you guys found it now that you've done, because obviously you've done TV and done all sorts of different things. How have you found kind of the process of auditioning and, and getting roles and then not getting roles, that kind of stuff? Are you kind of, used to it now in the sense that you might get some stuff but you you've been lucky to get some stuff but not others no i think <clears throat> once you kind of i think you realize it's like the the part the character kind of chooses you that someone said that to me recently and i was like oh yeah that actually makes sense is that i think it might have been denise goff had an interview where she would go out and see, see if there was a theater production that she that she didn't get and then she'd go to the show and see oh yeah actually i wasn't right for that for that role I think if you can kind of get your head around that, and as long as you're committing to it in the room when you're doing it, because you know, you can kind of, you can tell whenever you've yeah, it's just, done it's, it, if you're prepared in an audition, yeah. but um, you also have to be prepared to throw it away in an audition as well, because you might get there and turn up and they go, actually, we want you to do this scene, and mm. so. It's just, it's one of those things, again, it's that in a similar vein to that, it's like, I, the way that I sort of see it is that it's not your story, that isn't your story to tell at mm. that time, and, um, it isn't, it isn't really a re rejection in a way. Yes, they're saying no, but it's because when they're making their world, they don't necessarily see, you don't necessarily fit in that puzzle. Yeah. And it's, that's just, you know, you might fit in a different thing for something else or some, you know. So yeah. I feel like it, it, when it comes to like, yeah, auditioning and all that stuff, as long as you know what you're doing. And um, I think, if, I think Brian Cranston, there was this video that went viral, I remember years ago when I was in drama school of, them, of Brian Cranston being like, yeah, for auditions, I just present my version of how I would do it and I just do it and then I mm. let it go, let it, you know, let them decide whether they, they want that mm. or not. And I think that's the way you kind of need to approach a lot of this stuff. Yeah. I yeah. think there's also projects that, that would come along that you go, oh my God, I have to be, I have to be a part yeah. of that in some way or another, or just to work with that director. Or yeah. Um, and then, Obviously, a one if you can if you, if you get it, but also yeah. it's such a kick in the yeah, teeth, and you just have to just move have on. to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Have you? Um, is there something that you aspire to as as actors? Is there something that if you could do it in your lifetime, you'd love to do it? Whether it's working with a particular filmmaker or working with a, in a particular world, you know, obviously people would say Marvel or this and that. Is there something that you would aspire to that if you could do it, if you could pick something now, there's something that you would you would go and do. Wouldn't it be so depressing if we said like Ridley Scott and then we've now and worked with him and it's like that's, and you retire. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think I can retire now. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Aside from Ridley Scott, I'll ask you about it in a minute. Um, well, that's your fucking list. Oh now. God, yeah. No, I mean, um, again, it's just the the more I think about it, the more I the more the more work I do, I feel like it, it's as long as the story is exciting and the people and the creators are exciting um be them you know veterans in the world or you know fresh faces it's 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 all up you know it's, I, again it's, i'll be happy again we like worked with alex Gabassi on, yeah. on raised by wolves and i hadn't really heard much of him before you know d doing the job working with him was amazing and he's such a, you know, such a visionary and so passionate about what he does. I'd love to work with him again. You know, it's that feeling of like, I think that's a good thing about this industry is that you get introduced to so many new people, be it writers, mm. directors, producers, um, even Catherine actors. Bigelow, I'm just gonna say it. Oh, there you go. You know what I mean, Lynn Ramsey, 
Yeah. I would say you're, there's you're just the films that I, I, um, I gravitate towards, so I was like, give us a call, let me do it. Wow. You never know. You never know. Yeah. I'll, give you a, I'll give you a call. Did you, her last film was amazing. You're never really here. Yeah. Ben Ramsey. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah, that was a mm. harrowing film. You know what I mean? She found Joaquin Phoenix, I'd like to be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Old Joaquin. <laughs> uh, circling back then to you guys working with not just Ridley Scott, but his, I think one of his sons is on Raised by Wolves. Yeah, Luke. Yes, Luke. So Luke. tell me about the process of getting into, getting into that. I mean, did you know it was a Ridley Scott kind of linked thing when you auditioned and then got the parts for it or was, yeah, it, was, was all, it more yeah. for I always knew that it was it was Ridley Scott's debut TV series yeah. um I think that was it that's all I knew yeah, going into it yeah. and then you're like things all, that's all you really need to know because yeah. you know the man is the the father of sci-fi yeah so I mean, it was I remember meeting him during the audition process and it was like 45 minutes of not me of just listening to him talk and it was amazing. <laughs> so yeah, it was um, you, we, it was very heavily involved in in the process. And I think we all knew it from from day dot. So um, mm. and but he uh, trusts yeah. his um his casting director is a huge amount. Mm. So he'd, yeah, you know. As a final question, and what in terms of the show itself, mm. can you tell us a little bit about it and what people can expect because. TV is, is, is bringing oh, so many of these amazing directors that have done film for a long time, but are being drawn mm. to, to, uh, to TV because they're like, maybe we're able to tell stories that perhaps they wouldn't get the funding for or be able to tell in a two hour film. Um, so can you tell I us a little bit? I feel the glares of, of LA. LA <laughs> like, just like All the red dots. ready to come at me. Like. No, but it's, uh, it's the story's about uh, two androids who are sent to a distant planet to raise uh, a new civilization because Earth is destroyed because of a religious war, um, and it explores. Uh, You're in it. I'm, yes, I'm in it. <laughs> uh, uh, but it uh, it explores the the different relationships and uh, human emotions within families between human beings. So, for example, uh, Neve's character and um, and Travis's character, and then also the uh, dynamics between two androids. Me and Amanda, um, who play mother and father. So um, it's uh, it's it is a sci-fi, but it doesn't. And the only thing sci-fi about it is the aesthetic. The actual content of it is very kind of family drama driven, mm. which is um, really exciting and uh, mm. something I've never read before. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!